cloud. <clears throat> All right, once again, thank you for joining in short notice. Um, this is gonna be recorded. So I'll be talking about introduction to cloud computing. What is cloud computing? So the little simple summary of cloud is typically defined as a type of computing that heavily relies on sharing computing resources such as your local servers, your applications, your infrastructure within an IT environment. So that is really what cloud is all about. So the word cloud, it's just referring to a combination of multiple infrastructure is what makes a cloud. Welcome, Janelle. I know most of us are at work and doing our I thing. Am. <laughs> I understand. Uh, you know, I, di I didn't want to just lose any opportunity to kind of catch up with you guys. So um, pardon me, I would always sneak in some time. And I'm recording it, so I'll share it later with the larger team. Today, okay. I would like to just talk about general cloud computing. And, um, you know, and I was stating in my recording also that cloud is just simply defined as computing system that relies on sharing of multiple resources such as infrastructure, um, the application itself, databases, and so many other solutions can be shared within the cloud. Now, we'll get to some details of it because ultimately it's much more reasonable for a lot of organization. It's cheaper, it's more scalable, it requires less maintenance, less staff. In total, it has a lot of benefit. Of course, there are some downside from a security point of view. Um, the risk is there that, okay, if, um, you know, if there's a breach or compromise, an example, Amazon. Imagine Amazon being breached today, how much impact it will have on everybody. It's insane. I don't want to think about it because a lot of organizations are on Amazon Cloud anyway. So let's go to the next thing. This is just a definition from the uh, NIST, National Institute of Standards and Technology. And their definition is um, cloud computing is a model of enabling ubiquitous, convenient, on-demand network access to a shared pool of configurable computing resources. Like I said earlier on, we can share resources like your network, your server, storage, applications, services. It's amazing what the cloud has done for us. The cloud has made it so um, it helps a lot of self-service process, pool of resources together easily, allowing scalability of different resources. And there are so many models out there. There's this S, SaaS, PaaS, IAS, there's private cloud, community cloud, public cloud, hybrid cloud. We'll talk about each one of those in a bit. Um, evolution of computing. This is just giving us an idea. Of course, in the old days, we had mainframe. Then we went to the world of PC. If you guys remember, one of the popular quotes was Bill Gates said, uh, his vision was a desktop on every computer in the world. I'm sure right now you will be laughing at that goal because you know what is looking at desktop now? We are looking at iPad, phones, small devices, wearable devices. So the world has really changed even beyond what Bill Gates envisioned it to be. Then of course we went to the client-server relationship whereby we have a server and multiple computers aligned with those servers. Then we have web services that, you know, um, different web application, web solution, different services. We have web application servers all around the world whereby there are multiple um, servers maintaining different websites all over the world. Then there's the cloud, which is the big in thing right now. And I'm sure after the cloud, there'll be something else. A big talking point today will be hearing things like metaverse, you know, um, blockchain technology. So, so many other things are being talked about right now in the world. So just, you know, then some of basic advantage, and I'll share this post too with the team, um, basic advantages of the cloud, it's scalable, um, costless, you can utilize and scale faster, gives you business agility, helps with disaster recovery and business continuity and backup also. Um, this is just explaining what we've had in the past, traditional on-prem, then infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service. You can see here, 
the traditional on-prem would be like a data center with all of this bunch of services. Of course, with those services comes cost of operation of those services, the personnel running those services, so many other layers are attached to those services typically. Then we have infrastructure as a service. This gets into specifically focused on the application, the data, middleware, and operating system. Platform as a service focuses on just the application and the data itself, right? At that point in time. Um, then we have the software as a service. In this case, everything is applicable with software as a service because you're pretty much doing nothing. You're just relying on that service. An example is we use Gmail, we use Zoom. Every one of those services is in the cloud somewhere. I am just a user, I'm maintaining nothing and it's just running um, for me. And this is getting into the details. Infrastructure as a service is you know, giving us some much more detail here. If you remember one of our assignments I gave um, earlier was something called virtualization, whereby you can put like a virtual machine and it can, you can now put other application operating system on that virtual machine. And it's using a concept called hypervisor. Um, it's also called virtualization manager or virtualization monitor. So, you know, hypervisor is a big one out there too. It's always going to be there before we can put any operating system on our environment. So it's a, it's a common word out there too. Visualization, again, um, very important is the creation of flexible stock for actual resources. So you can mirror your resource with minimal effort and stress in total. So this is a good one for us to kind of go through also. Hypervisor, you can see here, these are software or firmware that can virtualize system resources. So we have two different types typically. Some is called the um, native or bare metal, which is can, you know, it run directly on the hardware. The other one is also called the hosted hypervisor that runs on an operating system separately. So that is something to kind of just um, think through. Welcome, Olamide, Michael. So that's for the hypervisor. And don't worry, bro, all of this, I'm recording it, so we're good. I'll send it to you guys shortly. We're just talking about the cloud computing. Uh, we talk about software as a service, infrastructure as a service. Uh, why do we use virtual machine? So that's where I am right now. So the virtual machine, the nice thing you guys, you did one exercise earlier on that covers virtual ma machine. You can install a virtual machine so that you can put your operating system on it. It makes it more easy to run, more flexible um, for organization and um, more scalable too, you know. And this is just showing some examples and don't mind, I'm gonna send this to us as a document also. Um, let me see. All right. The word auto scaling, as the name implies, is just how do we scale capacity of your server? What does that mean? Let's put it in simple terms. Hypothetically, if today you run an e-commerce business, you launch the e-commerce business, and your first day you were expecting 500 customers. Guess what? Fate was kind to you. You had 50,000 customers come to your website. Now, the last thing you want is you have that level of volume of people and they cannot process their transaction. That is lost revenue immediately. So what people do is that we can scale, meaning there and there we can immediately say, okay, let's scale this, expand the capacity, and we can enjoy the resource. Our business can be successful immediately once we scale it. So that's what auto scaling is all about, to help us to maximize resourcing, allocate resourcing, increase the capacity of your server. And don't overthink this because all that is saying is if your server capacity was, let's say, two terabytes, hypothetically, you can scale it to become five terabytes for the purpose of um, your business at that point in time. Guess what? If your business, you expected 50,000 and only 500 people should, you can also scale it down. That's the beauty of it. That means 
the cost implication will be lower for you because at that point, it's not gonna be crazy expensive, okay? All right, let's move on. This is an example of infrastructure as a service, IAAS. And uh, this is exciting because for those of us that, uh, people on this call, do me a favor, um, ask me later, you know, maybe the next two weeks, remind me and say, hey, can we all uh, play with um, Amazon EC2? I'll make everybody set up an EC2 instance. You have to create an account in Amazon, it's free. You can easily create an EC2 and I'll show you guys how to do that very easy. The reason I want to do that is, at least to give you an idea, it's not part of our class, okay? But it's just some fun stuff to show you how you can actually work on the cloud yourself. You can set up server on the cloud. It's, it's very simple. So don't even sweat that, easy. All right, um, let's see. Another cool thing here, we have platform as a service. Every one of these services that we have, one thing I want you to remember is there are just ways in which organization improve efficiency of their business. It allows them to be more comfortable with um, how they scale their organization and their business. So that is the cool thing about it, okay? Um, and this is giving us some specific of what we have in the past. Again, don't overthink it. Like any environment, there would be some baseline functionality that will be there. Number one, your environment would have an application. That is standard, right? Application will be like our Zoom application. Your environment at the minimum would also have an operating system. It's running on. It might be Unix, it might be Windows. Your environment will likely also have a database It is storing information and data, right? Database can be Oracle, data, um, DB2. There are many databases out there, okay? It's just a storage of information, simple. Um, network, of course, is the combination of all of these devices and how do we monitor them, which is what we are doing in our class already, right? Meaning we have all this network, they have IP addresses unique to them. How can we track those IP address to those networks? How can we make sure that the right flow of information is coming through this network? And if there is a gap or if there are visible issues, is there a way we can identify those issues? That's it. The cool thing about that is there are tools designed to help with this. So I'm not gonna sweat that at all. Um, again, this is just talking about some advantage of platform as a service. One thing that is consistent, mostly, whether it's platform as a service, infrastructure as a service, software as a service, it's all helping with cost reduction, flexibility, adaptability, security of the overall process, really. Most times, even though they won't tell you, well, we all know, the top reason people move is the cost. If I'm maintaining a data center where I have physical location and I have all this stuff I'm employing, I'm buying new servers, I'm buying new operating system, I'm buying, buying, buying all the time. And you tell me you can reduce the cost of all of this by 70%. Think about it. You are the CEO or CISO or CISO, I mean, um, CTO. And they ask you, you know, you can save 70% and you're still going to be efficient. You're still going to be using the best softwares in the world. So that's an easy one. I'm going to say yes. As long as we guarantee me security, right? Nobody will guarantee you security, but at least we can always say, well, um, we would have cyber insurance. We also, also remember every one of us, it's a buzzword from a strategy point of view. Every organization, you must ask them, hey, do you guys have a cyber insurance? Cyber insurance is like your regular insurance, like your liability insurance or your fraud insurance, whatever, those insurance, it's a big deal. What does that mean? If my system, my organization is eats by a malware or whatever, and it became a big news, whatever I lost in revenue up to certain amount, some cyber insurance goes as 100 million, 200 million, 300 million. So if there's an incident, all right, I hope it's not gonna be a more than 20 million, my cyber insurance covers it, right? So people know that, okay, we're good. Now, sometimes people use that as a reason to be sloppy and not do the right thing. However, all you can do is to keep reminding organization that 
yes, you are not susceptible right now. It's a function of when, not if. So you might be saying, well, I got cyber insurance. I don't need to worry about the security threat and all blah, 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 which I've seen a lot of people do. But you can you can't force them, but you can remind them. All it takes is one incident. And it would erode your confidence by your members or customers or consumers. It would reflect poorly to your business. It can expose you to class act litigation. It can expose you to actual regulatory and um, fines with government organization. Sometimes might even, if it's negligence, it might even potentially lead to jail term in some cases. So it's a lot of things you need to also make sure you're doing right, especially if you're publicly traded. Somebody had a comment? Okay, let's keep moving. And this is just talking about some platform as an infrastructure examples here. AWS, Elastic Beam, Cloud Control. Nobody's gonna ask you this. Again, this is just an educational opportunity for me to give you guys some general knowledge on cloud computing. And I'll do that weekly as much as I can so that we can have some interesting knowledge on areas outside of our core cyber, but they are kind of tied together because I want my guys to be knowledgeable when we are talking about general things. So even if they're saying, oh, cyber threat in cloud, I want you to know, oh, okay, the cloud solution, this is why they do it. The common one out there, we have AWS, we have, uh, which is Amazon Web Service. We have um, Azure, which is, uh, I believe, Microsoft. Then we have Google Cloud. Those are the three common cloud solution provider. There are some private smaller ones, but most organizations will not go with the smaller ones, except it's a small business, right? But bigger organizations will definitely not take that risk. They'll go with the big guys and feel more confident that you know they're fine. All right, let's keep going. Software as a service in simple terms, even your Gmail, our Yahoo uh, mail, our um, Zoom calls, these are SaaS services. The good thing about this is every one of the functionality the infrastructure, the application, network, database, operating system is run by the cloud. You don't care, you don't, yours is the user ID and password. You know, for me, I don't care what Facebook is using. The application they are using, the database, it's not my business, right? Because everything is running and working fine. I just pay subscription, they deal with the maintenance and whew, we are good, that's it, easy. So that's SaaS. So you guys might hear the word SaaS, S-A-S. That's the common thing. And look at this has just some advantage of it. Honest web, updates are automated. You don't have to think of installing patches or anything like that. All the updates are automatically done, which is awesome for most of us. Um, then we have, this are just some of the examples of those SaaS applications. You can see them here. We are all using it already. Um, your Facebook, your every one of those things we use currently are all already um, SaaS solutions, which is which is awesome actually. All right, let's keep going. Cloud services, you can see most of the cloud service providers will give you. These are the things they will tell you. Well, we offer all these services, and you can see um, here the big players: um, Amazon, EC2. Amazon is big. Azure, Microsoft is big, Google Cloud are big. Those three are the biggest one out there, all right? Okay, let's keep moving. All right, let me talk about this a little bit, a little bit. You might hear this word a lot, REST and API. Anytime, they, they, you might hear push also, push, REST, you know. Um, it's a, anytime you hear the word API, API means application program interface. API is the way we connect with each other. For example, you want to speak to uh, you know, Michael right now, Michael Dewu, at the moment. Um, we are speaking, we are hearing ourselves well, but guess what? There is an API feeding, connecting us so that we can speak to each other. So it's a connector. An example is when you go to a website and you click pay now, it takes you to PayPal. The connectivity, we don't see this, right? It's at the back end. It's that connectivity is called API to connect and speak to each other, okay? Application program interface. 
The other thing you might see a lot is REST. REST is an architectural style that allows communication between web services. So if I'm connecting with, uh, you know, I'm pulling information from another website or my own website, that connectivity is called REST. You might hear another thing called push, push notification. When, you know, you guys sometimes, you know, you're trying to log on to your um, Bank of America or one of your accounts, it will ask you, can you confirm it's you? It will push something like an, a token or a code to you to add that information. So you see those notifications too. So you might hear those words a lot. But again, this is not applicable to us. But at the minimum, when those languages are spoken, you can be intelligent about it and you will not be lost in the conversation. That's the intent for me, really. Okay, so I'm not making you guys, this is development stuff, but at least when they talk, I can relate. That's all. That's the goal. Just to make you guys more savvy, more easy to understand some of those concepts. That's the idea. And you can read this up also. Um, you can see we talked about RESTful already. You can, oh, this is a good example. You see, um, I didn't even know if they had a video. So you can see video on RESTful here. Yeah. Ours was more of um, Zoom, which is the same thing. Just give an example here. So one thing you should always remember is every time, look at this, everybody. This is typical what our environment looks like. For a second, you can pretend like this is not existing, this part of it. Let me see if I can make an uh, annotation. One second. For a second, I can pretend like this is not part of it, this part. Okay, just for an example. It is part of it, but just hypothetically, we're just pretending like it's not part of it, right? Because think about it, this is the application, the platform, the infrastructure, and the customer. So let's start with the customer here, right? This is the customer, you and I, we are using Zoom. The infrastructure of Zoom here, this is Zoom, right? The infrastructure of Zoom here, you know, even though um, it's there, we use it, but honestly, we don't care about it because it's not like, it makes no difference to me. Sorry guys, um, let me try and see if I can get it. Um, my, one second. Okay, let me see if this works. Okay, apparently not working. Okay. okay, so what I'm driving at is you can see all of this infrastructure, the application, everything is working at the back end. We are not seeing it. All you need to know is that there's something at the back end working. And for now, that's what we care about. Okay. All right, let me stop sharing. Oh, how do I clear? Okay. All right. See cloud deployment. Typically, when you deploy or move to a cloud environment, you are either doing public or private cloud. Okay. There's also hybrid. Let's keep it simple. If I call it a public cloud, it means a lot of customers can pull together and have the cloud solution. Private means I want to do it myself, dedicate resource for me alone. Hybrid means some part of our business, we do a public, some part of it, we do private. So we kind of merge it together. So many times, um, it's, let's think about it guys. If I say public versus private, it's fair to say public will be cheaper, private will be more expensive. You all enjoy the same benefit. The only risk is that, if um, the public cloud is breached, there's a problem. Um, all of us within the public are screwed up, right? If it's private, hopefully we have more security. But if we are screwed also, it's just you screwed, right? <laughs> so it's a two-edged sword both ways. But that's really the concept of um, both of them, really. And you can see a public versus private. You can see uh, there's a um, public, um, so public, you would have access, I'm sorry, private, you would have access to most of the information, the admin portal. So some element of control you have. In public, you have no control because it's for everybody. They just give you a part of the pie. It's for everybody. That's the main thing there. And you can see here also public versus private. 
um, publicly shared resource, privately shared resource here, support multiple customers, on-demand customer here, support connectivity over the internet, connect over internet, fiber, and private network. So it goes through a additional layers of security here. Um, it's more suited for less confidential information. If you are a company that deals with HR information, that deals with sensitive data, sensitive file, then naturally you want to be private cloud, okay? You can see a hybrid. You can purchase the use of a mix of dedicated server and virtual server. So you can kind of tailor it to the capacity of your own business. That's the advantage of it. So these are some benefits of public versus private. You can see the deployment model typically, just to give you an idea of it. You know, simple thing I want you to take away, private versus public. The hybrid is a combination of two. The community allows um, multiple group sharing also. Challenges to cloud computing, you know, uh, of course, security is the big thing. Secondly, loss of control. Now, one thing you should remember, we IT folk, we, uh, we won't say it openly, but we seem to be control freaks. What does that mean? It means many times we, we don't want to lose control. We are very perpetually focused on making sure we keep our control. Because when you move your solution to the cloud, you lose some level of independence and control. So that's another challenge you have to deal with. Security is a big challenge too. Um, like I said, you lose control. Then generally speaking, anytime you guys hear this word, very important, please take note of this, confidentiality, integrity, availability. These are the key cybersecurity concepts. Confidentiality, integrity, availability. Authenticity, they added here, but these are the CIA. Confidentiality, integrity, authenticity, and availability. This is so if you are writing an exam, let's say um, CompTIA or Computer Plus, you would, it's a big question they always ask. What is the threat, potential security violation that can challenge defense in an attempt to breach privacy? Vulnerability is a weakness. Risk is the possibility of a loss or harm, you know? Um, so threat is a potential violation. This is a good one. Security control measures to prevent threats and to reduce risk. Um, these are very good stuff. I would like to, let me quickly share this with our larger team. One second. It's a cool, enter my SQL stuff. I just screen watch it so that we can all have it as something we can use as a reference. Hey, I can, quick question. Sorry about that. Sure, please, go ahead. Did your computer uh, update it to last night? Because my computer updated and it, 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 I woke up and it's like a different view. Oh, it. okay. So I think maybe the recent video, uh, window version upgrade, right? Is that yeah. what happened? Yeah, I yep, think yep. So. yep, I had that last week, like a week ago or so. Yep, I, I had an experience too last week. Oh, okay. but, yep, yep, you're right. It was initially weird to me, but I got used to it. And I think it's better, actually. It's not bad. Uh, mine was last night. I woke up this morning. I was like, what? <laughs> Somebody just hacked into my computer. <laughs> no, no, no. I think it happened for most Windows. Um, if, you, if your computer is not too old, and I think the... Um, mine was automatically, they asked me the option and I just said yes. And before I knew it, everything changed and I had to learn a few things, but it was all good. I think I like it actually. Yeah, because I'm looking at yours and it's like, oh, it's the same now. I have the same interface, the way it looks like, yeah. Yep, same thing. All right, that's another one. Um, this uh, CSA is the Cloud Security Alliance. And it has identified some key breaches to um, critical threat to cloud security. And these are the top ones identified. Let me also copy this to our group because I think this is good stuff. It's good stuff. 
So I think there's a it's like pitch that we can level. Okay, let's go back here. Okay, let's keep moving. We'll be done in another few minutes. Uh, we talk about mitigations, how to prevent or prevent uh, risk in the future. We do risk assessment, um, development of policies and procedures. Now, this is more towards cloud, uh, but we'll still, as part of our class, maybe in the next two weeks, we'll talk about secure coding. Yeah, we call it secure software development lifecycle. It's just a way whereby um, software development goes through leading practices to build their code. It's very important because any violation can really expose us to undue risk within the organization. So it's a very big deal for us, okay? And uh, this is just talking about, uh, this is a good quiz actually. <laughs> uh, okay, this is just some, Jim is an example of what? SaaS. Hypervisors in cloud computing is to provide what? Virtual resource. Monitors virtual machine, what's that? Hypervisor. AWS Elastic Cloud Computing is an example of what services? IAS. This class I provide a programming environment in addition to basic server EAS. Multi tenant cloud development, where each of them is developed about as public cloud. This is good stuff. Let me copy it as part of a quiz. I like it. Really cool stuff. Again, uh, there's some cool stuff for us. All right, let's move on. Business trends. This is just talking about some of the trends out there. You guys can see key service provider. I think we talked about this before. Amazon, Google, Microsoft. Oh, micro, yep. Azure is Microsoft. Google is um, Google Cloud. Amazon is Amazon Web Service. And there are folks like Rackspace. That's another, another they are smaller, but they are also finding, fighting for the pie. And this is a big, um, these are the challenges. You can see, these are cloud hosting folks. A couple of them, Amazon, um, Verizon, at and IBM, Rackspace, you know. And this is just giving us a combination of those cloud platform. Um, this is explaining the value chain end to end, how it works. The bottom line and takeaway for us all is understand the world has moved from on premise of keeping the software servers into deploying it to the cloud because it's cheaper, it's more robust for them, it, they save more money from doing that and Everybody wants to save money from a business point of view. Some statistics from Infosys. Um, I will just skip some of this. This is just talking of why you have to do it. Um, so the rest is more sales pitch, so to speak. Um, the key areas I wanted us to focus on, we talked about it. The rest part of it is more sales speech for this vendor. But um, those are the key things. Some emerging trend. One trend I think I have seen recently is the, <laughs> the use of, um, currently there's the, a lot of talk about blockchain technology and a lot of talk about metaverse. So that, so I would not be surprised if there's a lot of um, adoption in those spaces. So just look out, there would be potential adoption in those areas at some point. All right, um, key takeaway guys, um, the world and everybody's moving towards the cloud. It's fair to say that. And um, let's end it there.
All right, let me stop sharing. And that's the topic about the cloud. Then we can talk about other things. All right, questions, general areas, questions, comments, things you want us to talk about. We just covered the cloud, generally speaking. From a cybersecurity point of view, one thing, maybe tomorrow I may talk about NIST framework, just to give us an idea of that framework and why people are using it and give you some insight into it. I think that'd be good. Um, but generally speaking, um, when you hear the word cloud, don't freak out. I can bet you whatever organization you're working for at the moment, or you would eventually work with, they would have one form of cloud solution or the other, guaranteed. So don't be intimidated. At least have an idea of it. That's the intent of this um, conversation. Any question, guys? Comments? Mm -hmm. Okay. The other comment I wanted to make is um, I sent some document to the group. It's not meant to scare us. It's just what we're going to do on Saturday and Sunday. I just thought it was nice to, for people that are <laughs> my overachiever people. So you can have it uh, handy if you want to. You are not expected to do anything with it, but sometimes people like to um, be ahead of you know, the class or want to know more about what's going on. So that will be meant for people like that. Um, at the minimum, what I would like you to do if you can, download, install Nmap and install Wireshark at least, you know, just go there install it let's go ahead and install it and that's it once we have it installed our life will be easy when we start our class so okay you know so if you can do it before the class perfect that would be super awesome and it's quite easy honestly i've seen it too we did it for mac and for windows so go ahead and please install them okay all right thank you so much everybody if you guys need me ping me and more to come Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.